hooter. Yeah, a steam hooter, a steam operated hooter, wouldn't it? That's right. Uh, which could be heard all over the town. Was it five to six in the morning? Six o'clock. And there was a fellow on the gates. There was gates there. And um, it's six o'clock. As soon as six o'clock struck or blew or they would, don't matter if somebody was six foot away from them gates, they would slam the gates and they would have to go home and come back at nine o'clock and they would lose that two hours work. But there's so much heavy work done in there apparently, isn't there? Oh yeah, molding work was terrific. I mean I've seen a calendar mail, is it they call it? Yeah, which is like a massive mangle. Ah. Uh, there's another one there turned the Iron Duke. Ah, the Iron Duke, is it? Yeah, that was produced, and made up for uh, the original factory when it opened. Really? Yes. And that was 1848, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. To see that working, though, the noise of the rubber, of the air banging in the rubber, which they would put the rubber in when it's, what's that, three parts through the mix, and then it would crack off and it would really, and the fellows would have knives and they would seem to cut it along. Yeah, cut it and blend it. My name's Andy King. I'm the senior curator of industrial and maritime history for Bristol Museums Service. And I'm based at M Shed most of the time and look after all of the stored collections in L Shed. And this, of course, is where the Iron Duke currently resides. In the very early days of the rubber industry, one of the most important things they needed to be able to do was to create rubber sheet. And an American guy called Chaffee came up with basically a huge mangle. Uh, so he had a big machine with steam-heated steel rollers. And uh, Stephen Moulton uh, bought the idea off him to, to make it over in this country and had the Iron Duke built and set up in Bradford-on-Avon to, um, to create a rubber industry, really. And so this machine is the root of that rubber industry as much as anything. Well, we've had it for 45 years, as I say. We collected it in 1970, which is when it last was used. So you have to imagine a very, very large mangle with three rollers. Each of the rollers weighs three tonnes. They were made up in Bilston in Staffordshire. Um, quite a few of the castings for the machine, the big things, were made in Bristol at uh, probably a, a foundry run by Bush and Beddows, who were about the biggest iron founders at the time in the city. And then a lot of the other bits and pieces are marked Colebrookdale, so have obviously come down from, uh, from Ironbridge, from the, the cradle of the Industrial Revolution, if you like, but again, another big uh, ironworks up there. The Dorothea Restorations have won the, uh, the tendering process for um, the work on the, the machine, and they'll put the thing back together. They've got a lot of experience of working with big, heavy machines like this. And we're very keen to, uh, to see it re-emerge. I'd love to see the thing in one piece. I never have. There have been men, some men, working there their whole working life, 51 yeah. years. Yeah. My father had several periods of work there, some as short as two weeks and some three months. It was, uh, I was one of the last ones to leave the factory in actual fact because I stayed on, because I, I was been charged on with a mill and what have you. So I'd done 45 years in Bradford. In the last three and a half years I'd done in the evening at Melksham. They used to make all kinds of things. They made um, rubber springs for the railway, for the buffers and that. Then there, there was all kinds of things, windscreen wiper blades. They made thousands and thousands and thousands of them. 24 blades come out every four minutes. And that number of presses, and that was round the clock, 24 hours round the clock. And then another thing they made was aerosol washers. Millions of them. Millions of them. And it was done at Church Street. Then when I started, then the first they used to make tennis balls. And they, they went all over the world. I think it's, it's nice that um, the Iron Duke is returning to Bradford after a long, long time. It'd be nice to see it back again. Although it won't work. <laughs>
The Iron Duke is a calendar mill from Bradford-on-Avon's prolific rubber industry, dating back to the mid-19th century. And it currently resides in the M Shed at Bristol's Industrial Museum. Uh, well, you have to imagine in the very early days of the rubber industry, one of the most important things they needed to be able to do was to create rubber sheet and an American guy called Chaffee came up with basically a huge mangle. Uh, so he had a big machine with steam heated steel rollers and uh, Stephen Moulton uh, bought the idea off him to, to make it over in this country and had the Iron Duke built and set up in Bradford-on-Avon to, um, to create a rubber industry really and so this machine is the root of that rubber industry as much as anything. Before he died, Alex Moulton, heir to the Moulton Rubber Empire, requested that the Iron Duke was refurbished and returned to the town as a monument to the rubber industry around which the town of Bradford-on-Avon thrived throughout the 20th century. Looking at the town today, it is hard to imagine it as a centre for post-industrial rubber manufacturing. It is not widely known how cutting edge the Moulton and subsequently named Avon rubber plant was. As a centre for innovation, the rubber products created here help drive industrial innovation on a global scale, supplying heavy industry, worldwide rail networks and the evolving car manufacturing industry. It was even responsible for developing the first ever sealed tennis ball, all at the hands of skilled workers that made up the labour force. Generation upon generation worked within these factory walls here in Bradford-on-Avon. And the legacy of these families' hard work still lives on today. We were making stuff for Volkswagen, we were making stuff for Volvo, you know, these places like that, British Rail, all the loads of springs and vacuum hoses and stuff, isn't it? Well, I'm very proud of everything that was done down there. I mean, it was my livelihood and lots and lots of other people's livelihoods. Um, if we didn't have the factory then, I mean, I don't know what we would have had. I think it's, it's nice that um, the Iron Duke is returning to Bradford after a long, long time. The monument of the Iron Duke would serve to remind the town and its hundreds of thousands of annual visitors of the historical significance of Bradford on Avon's rubber plant and the workers and their unique impact they had on British industry for over 150 years both domestically and throughout the world. It's a feat that deserves recognition and the Iron Duke would serve as a testament to that. <laughs>